What's going on YouTube? My name is Chris and welcome to Immodder Nation. Well, this is it. This is the last in the GPU modding series. If you haven't seen the first two videos, you'll see some cards appear in the upper right hand corner. You know what to do. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you step by step how to create your own GPU backplate by hand. Well, sort of without the use of a laser cutter or etching machine. In total, I produced three GPU backplates and I recorded hours of footage, so much so that I had to split this video up into two parts. Many of you clicked on this video because you already know what, oh, hit the microphone. <laughs> Oops. So many of you clicked on this video because you know what a GPU backplate already is. But for those of you that don't, why would you need a GPU backplate? Especially since many graphics cards already come with a factory installed GPU backplate. Well, I will tell you, first of all is structural rigidity. Many graphics cards come with very heavy heat sinks and heat pipes that cause the car to start bending in the middle. This is called GPU sag and it's very common among high end graphics cards. Uh, the back plate adds a little bit more rigidity to the PCB so it doesn't bend in the middle, creating a sag problem, which could cause premature failure to your graphics card. The second reason is cooling, and this one is still highly debated and very controversial, especially because many people believe that the back plate doesn't provide any sort of cooling, especially when you're using passive solutions instead of active ones, such as water cooling. And now these GPU backplates often are made of metal. They have uh, heat fins already built in and they kind of look like a big ass heat sink. And the third function of GPU backplates is aesthetic. And that's the type that I'll be focusing on in this video because everybody deserves to look fabulous. And these backplates look great too, often coming with custom graphics and RGB lights. And backplates are not exclusive to GPUs. You now see solid state drives coming with their own backplates. Pretty much any computer peripheral could have its own backplate. That's a good looking backplate on that case. So in today's video, I'm gonna focus on four primary steps. The first is gonna be cutting out the GPU backplate from three millimeter acrylic. I'm gonna then be using a die cut machine to cut out the stencil that I'll be using. We'll be painting the back plate white, then laying the stencil on top and spraying over it black. This will give it uh, some black lettering to contrast with the white plate. All right, ready? Let's get started. The first back plate is a basic GPU cover with a simple design. This is what I recommend for beginners. It takes much less time. It still looks pretty swag in your PC case. Dope. I've started by measuring out the acrylic sheet for the graphics card. For the sake of time, I've cut out the sawing portion of this video to show you more of the design element. You obviously know what sawing looks like. Checking the size of the backplate against the card before I proceed, the card I'm designing this for is the EVGA GeForce GTX 1060 6GB edition. You might have seen this card in some of my other GPU modding videos. Now in order to attach the GPU backplate to the GPU, we're going to be using magnets. Tiny magnets. magnets. How do they work? These button cell baby mags are going to be embedded directly into the GPU backplate. This is going to minimize the gap between the backplate and the graphics card. It's also going to create a very clean design. Now this design is used by many popular GPU backplate makers, but you could also use double sided tape as well. I'll be talking more about this method in part two of this video series. I'm marking where the magnets go by using a Sharpie marker. Now there'll be a magnet on these four screws surrounding the GPU. These are the tallest screws on the card and the first to make contact with the backplate. Next, I'll be drilling out the holes. Two things I would do differently in retrospect. One, drill only through the side that the magnet is going into. Drilling all the way through three millimeter acrylic for a magnet that's less than two millimeters tall means I had to use body filler for the top of the hole which didn't match the white paint and kind of look bad in the end. Bad planning, I know, I know. Lots of lessons were learned in this two part tutorial. Two, don't use wood drill bits. These tend to tear away at the plastic. Even if you go slow like I did, there's a good chance you'll crack the acrylic. And to be honest, I did many times. I recommend a step bit. They push material out instead of tearing. You can get cleaner drilled holes with acrylic and you don't have to buy a bunch of individual plastic bits for each size. Link is in the video description below. See, I drilled the holes too big and I used super glue to hold the magnets in place. If I had only taken my own advice, in retrospect, 
I wouldn't be doing this. After the magnets dried, I used the body filler, roughing up the acrylic, and by roughing up, I don't mean beating it up and taking its lunch money. I mean, I took a scuff pad. No, 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 not that scuff pad. A scuff pad for painting. Yeah, it helps the primer and paint attach to the plastic. I used a Rust-Oleum 2X coverage primer and paint combo. I like it because it's one step and it goes on pretty clean. It's also the same paint that I use for the background in my case of the LCD side panel mod version 2.0, so that helps. While the paint dried, it was time to make the stencil. Okay, so I lied. This guide is not entirely done by hand. I'll be using the Silhouette Portrait 2 die cutter to cut out my stencils. But in my defense, you can cut these out by hand. I just don't have the time since I'll be making three cards. I also want these to be as accurate as possible, and to be honest, my hands are a little bit shaky after a few energy drinks and not enough sleep. I created the graphic in Photoshop, imported it into Silhouette Studio software, and sent it to the die cut machine. It's a stencil, so it doesn't have to be white. I'm using some red vinyl left over from my Xbox controller vinyl wrap. Now comes the tricky part of transferring. I have two choices. I could either use transfer paper or I could use the water squeegee method. I've got a lot of experience installing screen protectors back in the day, so water method it is. Get the vinyl wet so it doesn't adhere to the plastic and make sure it's lined up properly. Once the design is lined up properly on the back plate, start from the middle and push the water out the edges with the squeegee. Now I'm gonna add some small details to the stencil. You know, remove the holes, add some parts to the letters back. Alignment is important, so if the stencil isn't lined up properly, the final design is gonna look odd. And then I have to report back to you in shame. Shame to my old family. Whew, so much pressure. This GPU backplate is gonna be in the LCD side panel PC, so these backplates will be white. I'll be painting the backplate white, putting my stencil over the white paint, and removing only the letters and spraying the backplate black. This will give me a black design on a white background. I could also do the same thing by switching the white and black paint, painting everything but the design, but I would need more white paint to cover up the black than I would need black paint to cover up the white. Make sense? I'm saving paint here, guys. At the cost of vinyl, you say? Pfft, minor detail. All right, the stencil's done. Hope it works. So I hit the stencil with some Rust-Oleum Black. I'm not a Rust-Oleum fanboy or anything, but Home Depot sells it and it's the cheapest that they have. So call me a fanboy. Now I'm peeling off the stencil to see how the design looks. It's important that you go slowly on this part for dramatic effect. And you guys really love this peel stuff, huh? Since the paint a motherboard video. Peel it off. Looks like the vinyl took some of the paint off from the magnets. Mm. I'll have to fix that off camera. This is why you don't drill through like I did. I hope you guys were paying attention. So I'm using an X-Acto knife to get those final details done. Enjoy that view of the top of my head while you're at it too. All done, and I rated a meh. Need to do some fix up before we're done. Well, I think this back plate looks pretty flippin' sweet. Stay tuned to part two where I show you how to make RGB varieties of this back plate. Things are about to get lit. Ah, yep, this YouTube stuff is easy. 
Speaking of easy, getting entered into my contest. That's right, through the month of July, I'll be giving away a Silverstone 750 watt Strider Gold power supply. Now to get entered, very easy to do, just click on the Gleam link in the video description below. Now this is a US contest, but my international fans do not worry because you will have the opportunity to be entered to win a $25 Amazon gift card. Now remember, this contest ends August 4th, so get entered today. No, seriously, like, like do it now, like right now. Just scroll down and just click that link, you know. I'll wait. I don't know why I'm checking an imaginary watch. Thank you so much for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you slap that like button below and share the video. And while you're at it, why not join the Modern Nation and get subscribed by clicking on that subscribe button below. And hey, when you do, don't forget to click on the bell icon inside the button to be notified the moment that I release new videos. If you have any comments or questions, be sure to leave them for me in the comment section below, or why not hit me up on social media? I'd love to hear from you guys. And when you buy products from Amazon, consider using the affiliate links in the video description below. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see ya.